All right, a lot going on here. We do have team coverage for you right now at 730. I'm Caitlin Nuclo. I'm Tracy McCain. We'll get to that breaking news in just a few moments. Let's talk about the risk for today. There's a first alert for dry conditions and wind. Meteorologist Jill Gilardi has the latest, not the combination that we really need yeah. to be no. talking about in no. October. No, I mean, imagine like if you're trying to fuel like a campfire, you start fanning it yeah, and right. you know, it gets that flame going. The same thing could happen with that wind picking up. Right. You get a little flame and all of a sudden it can spread Yeah, all quickly. the conditions are right for it. Yes, uh, so while we have, you know, dew points up a little bit, the air isn't super dry. We just have a ton of dry brush. And again, it's not gonna take much for, you know, a little fire to get going if you don't properly, you know, extinguish whether it be a cigarette, something as small as that, uh, to anything else that could cause a spark. So be very cautious today and tomorrow with those conditions in place. Now, we've barely seen any rain this month. The departure is over two and a half inches, over six inches since September. It's desperately need rain, not going to see really any for the foreseeable future, which is horrible news. The other thing that you're not going to be able to see is uh, maybe down the road a little bit because we have fog to contend with and limited visibility due to that. Uh, so at times, again, we've been seeing that camera in the Hartford area showing you the fog. There it is, a little flip of it. Uh, hard to see out there in some places. 50s, a few spots in the 40s uh, for the kiddos out at the bus stop. Be cautious of them uh, because it could be uh, challenging to see. But a good day for recess outdoors and a beautiful afternoon ahead. We'll talk more about uh, the change coming our way. A cold front that's in the next 10 minutes. Caitlin, how's traffic? All right, Jill. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so we are dealing. I'm going to reiterate what Jill was just mentioning, mentioning here, weather and traffic together, that that fog is out there and unfortunately causing some visibility issues for that morning commute. If you're heading out the door, you can see taking a live look here in Berlin along Route 9. Uh, here in Waterbury, we've got that fog that's kind of hanging above the tree level here. Uh, still a little bit of fog in the Middletown area, also along Route 9, but doing better. That sun is working to burn some of this off, but we're really socked in here in Tolland, 84 East and Westbound. That's right off of Cider Mill Road by Exit 68. Same story here in Montville, 395 North and Southbound by Exit 6. So. Uh, visibility could be really challenging for you as you're heading out the door. You don't need those high beams, but uh, low beams will help you out as you're heading out this morning. Uh, other than that, though, no crashes, no major incidents. However, we are dealing with some typical delays. Fog won't help you here. Uh, 84 eastbound heading into Hartford, 37-minute ride, and then 95 southbound, uh, just about a 110-minute ride heading towards the George Washington Bridge this morning. Parkway also backing up. I'm Caitlin Francis with your Connecticut Chevy First Alert Traffic Report, driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. All right, we begin our live team coverage this morning in Weathersfield, where the community is grieving after Robert Sharkovich Sr., a volunteer firefighter with the fire department there, was killed in a UTV accident. It all happened while he was battling that massive brush fire in Berlin, which is still burning this morning. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Olivia Schuler is live at the Weathersfield Fire Department with more on what we're learning about this dedicated first responder, Olivia. Caitlin and Tracy, good morning. Well, the community of Weathersfield is mourning the loss of a parent, grandparent, and first responder. Robert Sharkovich Sr. spent most of his life as a first responder and as a firefighter. Sharkovich, known to many as Sharky, started his career with the Hartford Fire Department before moving on to volunteering with the Weathersfield Fire Department. He was a pillar of this community, serving in public safety and in the public school district. The Weatherfield School Superintendent, Michael Emmett, says Sharkovich worked in the school district as a physical services carpenter. Emmett released a statement saying, in part, quote, Words cannot express the magnitude of this loss. I offer the Sharkovich family our deepest condolences and wish them peace and comfort during this difficult time. Sharkovich was honored by his brothers and sisters in law enforcement. Several hours ago, first responders met outside the medical examiner's office in Farmington. This morning, that's where Sharkovich's body is. The procession leading to the medical examiner's office included police and fire crews from dozens of cities and towns across Connecticut. The lifelong firefighter will be honored again in a procession we know in the days to come, Sharkovich's body will be escorted from the medical examiner's office to the funeral home. Now, at this point, funeral arrangements have not been uh, made clear to us, but as soon as we have those details, we will share with them with you here. And we want you to take a look right now. You can see that here at the fire station above the garage, there is two, uh, excuse me, three purple and black flags to remember that life lost. And we also know that the Weathersfield.
Public school district is going to have counselors on hand this morning for both staff and students who are grieving. We're live in Wethersfield. Olivia Schuler, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Yeah, that loss being felt around our state this morning. Our team coverage continues now where that Wethersfield firefighter was tragically killed. It happened uh, while they were going up Lamentation Mountain where this fire is happening. Yeah, Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Marcy Jones is live there now. Marcy, what's the mood as firefighters report for duty this morning? Well, it's a very somber morning. It's also a sobering reminder of how firefighters put their lives on the line every single day and face danger to keep the rest of us safe. Take a look. We're here at the Days in parking lot where it's really served as a base camp for all first responders. We've got people from all over, all different municipalities coming here to kind of have a meeting of the minds and to check in with each other and also to figure out the status of things currently. According to officials, the crash happened yesterday afternoon. Four Weathersfield firefighters were taken to the hospital after their UTV rolled over on the side of the mountain. Three have since been released and are expected to be okay. However, 66 year old Robert Sharkovich, a volunteer Weathersfield firefighter, sadly did not survive his injuries. First responders from all over are calling this an immense loss, one that will be extremely difficult to navigate. It's, it's our worst nightmare, uh, especially, you know, for a brush fire. It, just goes to show that this job, no matter where you are, uh, whether it's inside of a structure or out in the woods, is dangerous. Now that the sun is starting to peek through, it's a little bit more uh, increased visibility out here. However, it's a very different scene from yesterday where we could see the fire on the side of the mountain perfectly glowing. It's not the same uh, this morning. We do have a lot of extra people out here as far as getting all of the first responders together and really being on the same page and, of course, having an extra shoulder to lean on during this incredibly difficult time. Reporting live in Berlin, Marcy Jones, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Well, this morning, reaction is pouring in about the death of firefighter Robert Sharkovich Sr. The Uniformed Professional Firefighters Association of Connecticut wrote this message you see on your screen. My thoughts and prayers are with the Weathersfield and Hartford Fire Departments on their terrible loss. We want to keep their family and loved ones in our thoughts during this difficult time. The governor also posting on social media saying, quote, firefighters go above and beyond to protect our communities. My prayers are with his family and colleagues at this devastating time. And quote, Governor Lamont has also ordered flags to fly at half staff across the state. And the Newington Volunteer Fire Department posted NFD extends their heartfelt condolences to our task force 51 members and family of the Weathersfield Volunteer Fire Department on the loss of one of their own. Sending prayers to the other members hurt. We will take it from here. Well, right now we want to get a status update on where things stand right now as that fire continues to burn on Lamentation Mountain. Yeah, Channel 3's Roger Suzanne and live at the first alert desk breaking down what's happening right now. Roger, a long day ahead for these firefighters. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. The good news though is we do know that more help is on the way, but the danger certainly is not over. We know 90 acres of land has already been charred. And again, as you mentioned, those flames have still not been completely contained. So let's go out there to the scene. This is a live look at the staging area in Berlin. You can see all of the emergency response vehicles that are there right now as firefighters and other first responders are at that scene. It's still a somewhat hazy day, so we can't see any flames, but we do know that crews from outside the state in Maine will actually arrive at the scene there later this morning. They're going to play a really important role. What they're charged with is actually trying to extinguish the fire from above. Now, while that's going on, firefighters down on the ground will also be very busy. They're going to conduct controlled burns to try and clear out any dry brush that could potentially fuel those flames even more. Connecticut Task Force One has also been activated. That's a team of elite first responders that help out during disasters. And the Connecticut National Guard has told us they will send crews to Berlin over the next 24 hours. Now, the one sliver of good news in this horrible situation is that nobody's had to evacuate their homes and no houses or homes have actually been damaged. Live at the First Alert Desk, I'm Roger Suzanne in Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Jill, I'll send it over to you. All right, Roger, thank you. Yeah, today, tomorrow, we've issued that first alert. Uh, not only today do we have the red flag warning, we just assume that tomorrow it will also be issued for the state when the air will be even drier. But another warm day and the breeze, that is going to be that new factor that will be kicking in both today and tomorrow. So if there is a 
fire that develops, it could rapidly spread. So we are concerned about that potential there. New London, the concern this morning, the fog. It's tough to see out there. 50 degrees. Uh, we have limited visibility, as you can see. <sighs> can't see it all basically in Meriden down to zero and uh, temperatures are mild initially and they're going to be mild once again today but we have a cold front on the way I'll be timing out that cool down coming up in your first alert forecast.